Soy Mink will come just for heat. Jesper Kidd, thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. It's always incredible to hear your music live. It's, um, and to be in a room, uh, you know, full of gamers, the excitement level is, is just totally something else. You know, I get to hear my, my themes being rearranged by different orchestras. first got the Commodore 64, my brother and I, we were just playing video games like crazy. My dad bought a music program and I started fiddling around with that. Um, and, you know, it, it, it really piqued my interest because I thought all that great game music, I wanted to, you know, somehow become a part of that. Um, or I just wanted to learn how it was done, really. Charles Michel Charles was a huge influence, you know. It's his music had such a big impact on me as a kid. You know, my parents would play that music to me and I would, would really love it. And um, also, like, Vangelis was another early influence of mine. Um, anything that had that electronic uh, and, and, and that feeling that this is new, this is something that hasn't been heard before. And I think, you know, Charles Michel Charles and Vangelis very much had a sound that you hadn't heard before. You were like, what is it, this stuff? And it felt like the beginning of something. That led to um, being introduced to the European demo scene when I was about uh, 14 or 15. You know, I would send a track to one of these demo teams and they would time everything to my music, which allowed me complete creative freedom. I, I very much like to, you know, play everything I don't play the violin so I you know I, I perform it on the the piano and then I, I call a great violinist and they, they play it and they double my my notes childhood Growing up and my teenage years, I was totally um, embraced in electronic music. But after Hitman, I knew th that um, you know th this this new sense of interest had been awoken in me that apparently had always been there. And um, Hitman 2 is what opened my eyes to the to the world of acoustic instruments and uh, especially the choir and the orchestra. I was, you know, made to score those types of games because that's what I did coming out of the demo scene. That was always my, um, that was my sound, you know, trying to just um, surprise people. And it just, it just kept evolving. So Hitman Blood Money was a mix of Hitman 2, which is orchestral, and Hitman Contracts, which is electronic, into like the ultimate fusion of the two. And I think that fusion is, um, has become like a key of my sound these days. I love mixing orchestra and electronics together. Il y a à la fois donc ce mélange de cette cette approche impressionniste de des choses avec un avec un mélange en même temps techno et technologique, c'est-à-dire de d'utiliser les instruments de notre génération, de notre époque. Euh, qui ne sont pas nécessairement uniquement l'orchestre symphonique, que ça peut l'être, mais même si ça l'est, c'est retrafiquer, retravailler avec les plugins, avec les, avec les instruments de, de la génération.
it's pretty crazy to think about that Assassin's Creed, we're listening to as his family and it's been written 10 years ago. Um, so listening to the kind of music I wrote 10 years ago and what I do today, of course I would do everything differently because I like to keep growing as an artist and, and I like to think I keep improving, but uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful to hear it. It's, it's, uh, everything is brought out in a performance like this. You can't hide between anything, any notes or anything. When you wrote Asio's Family, mm -hmm. where was inspiration? Like, where, where was it from? Well, it, it came from Ezio's uh, loss of his close family. You know, when he lost his, uh, his father and I believe he lost his two brothers, you mm -hmm. know, and um, it was in a very public venue as well. They were hanged in the square mm -hmm. um, for, and his, his father was connected to being an assassin. I needed to write to understand Ezio as a character better. Mm -hmm. And so once I had written that, it was the first music I wrote for Assassin's Creed 2. Mm -hmm and I felt like it, it gave me a way in to score the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why Ezio's family has caught on so much and become so iconic is because it's simple without being simplistic. Simple is like elegant. Simple is powerful while using very little resources. So just those simple ba 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 eight notes, but that's all you need, you know? It's like Beethoven uses four notes, da na na na. It's the same idea, you put a lot of truth and power into very few notes. Join me, welcome, just for heat. It's, it's very interesting the emotional response you get from, from the audience when you play, uh, especially video game music live, because people have played those games a lot and they know that music very well. They have played the game maybe 20 hours, 40 hours, 100 hours. So when they hear that music live, uh, I think there's a connection there that goes much beyond than what you get from when you hear a film score live. A film score can be two hours, a video game can be many, many hours. And so you really get accustomed to that music um, and it becomes kind of part of the experience. It becomes part of the game, it becomes part of what you like. Thank <laughs> you.